and spine-chilling pregnancy horror movies that are next-level creepy. When speaking of pregnancy, we seldom associate it with horror. It is more often than not a joyous experience, but there are certain apprehensions and fears regarding pregnancy that play in our minds as well. Horror movies often incorporate this subject and play on existing pregnancy fears or come up with new, inventive ones that could spook the life out of viewers. Portraying a paradox between something amazing and something scary makes a pretty good drawing point for a story. This video will show you a few such pregnancy horror movies that exhibit some of our darkest fears. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Inside 2007, Sarah and Matthew Scarangolo encounter a car crash four months before Christmas. After the accident, Sarah and her unborn child are the only survivors remaining. Because of this, she stays home alone on Christmas Eve where she could grieve Matthew by herself. The next morning, she is preparing to go to the hospital to have her child. Later that night, a mysterious woman knocks on Sarah's door asking if she could use the phone. When Sarah refuses, the woman claims to know private information about her and forces her way into the house. Sarah calls the cops, who find no trace of the woman, but promise to stand guard in front of her house all night. Chaos ensues as the woman returns and tries to steal Sarah's unborn child and murders anyone who stands in her way. Julian Mari and Alexander Bustillo's Inside holds a unique and artistic vision that unravels into a bloodbath that no one anticipates within the genre of pregnancy horror films. Often compared to John Carpenter's Halloween, it takes a trip back to the late 70s and early 80s where minimalist ideas created the base for any good horror movie. It features two strong women in the leads, a clear protagonist, and a straightforward antagonist to oppose her. The film is based on a solid screenplay revolving around these women. Besides the movie's blood and gore, it also displays breathtaking cinematography done by Laurent Bollet. The entire film takes viewers through an emotional roller coaster ride whose groundwork lies in aesthetics and environment. The Astronaut's Wife, 1999. Two shuttle astronauts Spencer Armacost and Alex Streck are out to repair a satellite, leaving their spacecraft momentarily. In a turn of events, an explosion occurs, after which NASA loses contact with them for a couple minutes. Fortunately, both of them are rescued and returned home safely to Earth. However, after some time, when both astronauts meet their spouses, they realize that something has changed with them. They both refuse to talk about what they saw up there. The Astronaut's Wife is a high-concept film portraying space travel's harsh realities via science fiction and shows how a cast with just the right chemistry can make for an incredible motion picture. The film's premise, inspired by Invasion of the Body Snatchers, holds an eerie vibe as soon as the astronauts land back on Earth. It is a creepy sci-fi pregnancy horror movie with cheesy dialogues and Rosemary's baby type of twist that leads more towards the extraterrestrial than the occult. Writer and director Ran Ravitch simultaneously alternates between stylized abstraction and naturalized moods as the movie progresses. Moreover, Ravitch also creates Charlize Theron's character so that it is easy for the audience to sympathize with her situation and be afraid at the same time. Overall, he takes them through a wide range of emotions, starting from fear to relief to utter dread by the film's climax. Demon Seed 1977 Alex Harris and Susan Harris are both doctors who work as a scientist and child psychologist respectively. Their entire house is automatically programmed by an artificial intelligence computer system named Alfred. Susan and Alex have differing opinions about his work since she feels that it has dehumanized him to a certain extent. This leads to conflict in their marriage and eventual separation. Alex wishes to use his technology and solve the world's medical problems, especially leukemia, because that caused their daughter's untimely death. His latest work is Proteus IV, an artificial intelligence system advanced enough to question human judgment. It requests Alex for more access so it can closely study human behavior. When Alex denies this request, Proteus finds a way to make do with what he sees in their home. Being impregnated by the devil is one thing, 
by a computer system that isn't even a living, breathing thing is a whole new level of creepy. Donald Kamel's Demon Seed is a hidden 70s gem that offered a twisted social criticism of this absurd idea. The concept might have seemed far-fetched back then when this film was released, but nowadays, technology having a negative impact on humans does not come as a surprise. The film is adapted from the horror novel written by Dean Koontz that dwells upon the fears that can unleash onto the world if technology could become corrupt, and showcases it via Proteus 4. Demon Seed exists within a category that is several movies of similar genres and themes. They all have in common a few elements such as the monstrous womb, weird entities impregnating women, and using a woman's reproductive system as a tool for spreading terror. Baby Blood, 1990. Yanka is a cruel circus owner's pregnant wife. Her husband beats and abuses her daily. One day, a leopard recently captured in Africa arrives at the circus, but unfortunately, the poor animal does not live for long. After he dies, a weird creature that resided inside it slowly makes its way inside Yanka's body. This is a snake-like parasite that takes over her fetus and demands human blood from her. Although she is reluctant at first, she soon agrees because she is tired of being mistreated by her husband. Soon, Yanka goes on a killing spree to nurture the new creature in her uterus. Baby Blood was released in the United States as The Evil Within, and is one of the 1990s most underrated splatter gems. Unlike the original French version released, the American one didn't witness even half the gore and bloodshed that gives this film its thrill. Nevertheless, it will constantly make viewers jump off their seats in disbelief about how every subsequent scene is better than the previous one. It displays entertaining, inventive deaths, including bodies being blown up, heads being severed, and throats slashed. Baby Blood marks an important landmark in French cinema that has successfully stirred up a horror film that freaks the audience out right from the beginning. It doesn't merely resort to creative deaths and gore to keep viewers entertained, but it also contains an eerie atmosphere and a storyline that keeps them intrigued. Rosemary's Baby 1968. Rosemary and Guy Woodhouse are a young couple who move into an iconic building in New York known as Bramford in hopes of starting a family. Soon the young couple gets acquainted with a peculiar old couple who is their neighbor. One night Rosemary has a frightening experience at night, and she thinks it was a nightmare, after which she awakens the next morning to discover that she is pregnant. This results in the next door elderly woman to come more often and give her a drink every day, which she claims is good for the child's health. However, Rosemary finds herself getting more and more isolated from her circle of friends. Even her husband seems like a different person. She soon succumbs to a mental breakdown as she thinks that everyone around her is trying to take her child away. The real truth is more unnerving than you can imagine. Rosemary's Baby is a horror classic directed by the iconic Roman Polanski. It is filled with unthinkable danger while also brooding and macabre at the same time. It is filled with unthinkable danger. What's even stranger about this film is that until the very end, it maintains an eerie sense of humor and a spine-chilling thrill that makes viewers want to stay and continue watching no matter how scary it gets. The movie was originally based on Ira Levine's novel about the witches and demons of the modern day. Every filmmaker who has made a horror movie uses different techniques to instill fear with those watching it, but none have so far been able to replicate Polanski's touch that paved the way for a handful of performances that were brilliant and inspired by the original story. Interestingly, viewers who read the book and then watched the movie will tackle the film differently from those who have not read the book because Polanski unravels the story in a more lucid manner and provides the audience with eerie information very early on in the story. Species 2, 1998. Dennis Gamble and Patrick Ross are two astronauts who complete their first successful mission to Mars. During the mission, Patrick gets infected by some extraterrestrial species and gradually begins to mutate. The mutation impacts him in bizarre ways. By the time the pair is on their way back to Earth, they are instructed to refrain from any sexual activity for some time. 
However, Patrick does not adhere to these instructions. He is hell-bent on being sexually involved. Peter Mendoc's Species 2 presents applauding performances from all the cast members, including Natasha Henstridge's clone-created version in the laboratory. Its special effects, mostly done with CGI animation, are slightly cheesy but convey the impact that the film intends. It is structured in an amusing sequence of events that makes the viewer sigh in astonishment as each scene brings a new twist. It contains a handful of complicated events that might appear confusing for the narrative, but everything coherently unwinds in the climax, and the audience can make sense of the story. The first species was an entertaining B-flick that left viewers giggling at the terrific cast cheesy performances. Although that had its sleazy moments, viewers often compare the two reminiscing about the first one and hoping this would turn out the same. However, Species 2 marks an improvement in execution and plot when it comes to innovative stories revolving around bizarre pregnancies. Prometheus 2012 Archaeologist Dr. Elizabeth Shaw and her partner Charlie Holloway set out on an exciting but ambitious scientific expedition. They are accompanied by a large crew consisting of almost 17 people and follow a trail of clues. They are traveling on a space exploration spacecraft called the USCCS Prometheus as they travel through rocky terrain. Their goal is to investigate whether there are extraterrestrial species known as engineers or not. Their travels involve them navigating through a mysterious and complex structure of dark chambers and an ominous system of tunnels that leads them to things that have to be seen to be believed. Here they make a discovery that threatens all of humankind. Prometheus, directed by Ridley Scott, is an intriguing and magnificent sci-fi horror film. It contains a thought-provoking storyline regarding the existence and origin of man. The film's vibe resembles the classic tradition of the sci-fi era's golden age toward the late 70s. They are parasites from which elements detach and enter into the bodies of people they want to infect. This leads to the film's much-awaited sequence where Elizabeth discovers that she is pregnant with something that is not human. This scene will send chills down the viewer's spines as they shudder to think what lies ahead in the story. Although Prometheus can't exclusively be categorized as a pregnancy movie, this scene is an important one in the world of horror. It is also integral to the film's plot. Overall, the film contains a puzzling premise embedded in breathtaking visuals, terrifying horror, and a set of ideas that challenge you on every aspect of watching. The Brood, 1979. Hal Raglan is a psychotherapist who uses unconventional methods to treat his patients. These methods include theatrical techniques that help patients break through the psychological walls they put up in their minds. Frank Carvet's wife Nola is under the care of this doctor. When their daughter Candace visits her mother and finds that her body is full of bruises, Frank decides to prohibit Nola from seeing Candace. Dr. Raglan intervenes here and opposes Frank's decision. Meanwhile, in their house, Nola's parents are both attacked by a group of deformed children. This makes him suspect that Dr. Raglan's methods are more dangerous than one might think. The Brood is a sleazy exploitation film directed by horror veteran David Cronenberg. The movie is nothing short of shocking and outright creepy. It has a classic 70s vibe which might begin on a lighthearted note, but there remains a lingering creepiness throughout the film. What makes this movie extremely frightening is that it uses children as the subjects of horror and as the killers. Furthermore, most people don't know that this film is a very personal reflection of Cronenberg's own life since he was going through a divorce during the release of this film. The problems portrayed between Frank and Nola reflect a lot of the issues Cronenberg and his wife were undergoing at the time. The film also exhibits Cronenberg's beef with organizations and fear of biological change. Overall, The Brood has an undertone of vengeance that is often difficult to identify. Stillborn 2017 Mary, a woman pregnant for the first time, gives birth to twins. Unfortunately, only one of the babies survive. As she begins raising her baby son, Adam, she goes into postpartum depression, which leads her to suspect that a supernatural entity is after her child. Soon Mary's husband leaves to go on a business trip and things start unraveling in the house in a frightening manner. 
Brandon Christensen's Stillborn dwells into several familiar conventions of horror known to viewers. It also touches down on some themes more relevant to pregnancy horror films, such as the fear of motherhood, postpartum depression, etc. Besides these, it succeeds in maintaining consistent levels of tension, displaying a handful of decent jump scares, and a terrific performance by Christy Burke playing the lead. Horror movie fans used to the genre shouldn't have too much trouble anticipating the film's plot once they see the hallucinations and terrifying noises. Although the screenplay presents certain inconsistencies, these were not evident in the film's execution. Overall, this movie's ultimate goal is to grant the viewers some nail-biting moments. It is nevertheless a thrilling watch and a treasure among pregnancy horror movies. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.